Yep. Back and better than ever. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fangirl Files podcast. <laughs> this isn't our intro, it's all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta switch it off after switch it up after the two weeks we were gone. Make it seem like yeah. we were planning something important. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make it all special. And... Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the reason we were gone wasn't actually because we are incompetent pieces of. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's partially why. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah, we're alive. We just... we we are here, my friends. Oh, this God. is so little energy. <laughs> yeah, we're not. <laughs> I feel like we should explain why we're so low energy today. Yeah. So, as you can see, we're here. We're back. It's been two weeks. You probably thought we were dead. But we've been very dead because <laughs> Madison had finals and so did I. Yep. And I graduated college and also started work this week. So... Thank yeah! Thank you. I. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I'm not gonna say anything. I love my job, but I'm just really tired and I want to go to bed. That's all I have to say. Um, so that's that. We didn't Thanks. even think to post on social media about this because we were just that dead. Yeah, and stressed. So you may hate us. You may want to unsubscribe, and that's fine. Tangent aside, we are going to be talking about death of the author today. We have a lot of things to say on this topic most of which that i think we agree with each probably other yeah are we gonna kind of talk about like separating the author from the art too yeah i would like to um mm. personally because i have like a very personal take on that with harry potter as i'm sure you all know yeah yeah so yeah. if you want to open it up like okay that's fine with me I, I mean, what I was going to say is I feel like it just comes down to humanity being, like, a gray place because you're never going to find an author that's, like, 100% perfect. Every artist is going to have, like, some sort of problematic right. thing that influences their work. But I still think that they should be held accountable. You know, I still think 100%. that they should face a backlash for that. But at the same time, which I think you agree with, um, you can still sort of appreciate their content and you can still like their content. I think the only thing... appreciate them for their content, not for anything else. Yeah, that's true. And I think you just need to think, you know, critically about what you're reading and realize, oh, like this probably comes from some sort of internal bias that has shaped Mm -hmm. the author and to like do some external research to make sure that, You know, at least in terms of what happened with, like, J.K. Rowling, like, you know, hear from, like, a trans person perspective and educate yourself about, like, trans people's issues. But that's my general take on it. What about yours? I agree with you. And I definitely think that that educating yourself is a good thing, especially when you're in that kind of position of power. But do I think that people like her who have those kind of transphobic tendencies are going to take the time to do that? No, No. Because I think we all know those people – are very not open-minded to the lifestyles of other people, the wants of other people. Like, they just don't care, and they care completely about themselves. And the thing that upsets me the most about J.K. Rowling and why I think a lot of people um, have disassociated her with her content is because Harry Potter, and I mean, if you look deeper into it, it's not necessarily as inclusive. However, like... When you're reading it as a kid and you grow up with it, you see the amount that she pushes back or, like, the characters push back against a government that is so set on eradicating different races or different um, class levels or just different people from the wizarding community. And Mm -hmm. it's just – it's very much so pushing towards acceptance, love of all the houses at Hogwarts, of all the people that live in the magical world. And you wouldn't think of her, and especially all its creatures as well, if you've seen Fantastic Beasts or, like, taken note of all the scenes in the books with the Forbidden Forest and the centaurs. But the thing is, is, like, she's preaching this inclusivity, whereas to find out that she herself is not inclusive and is not open-minded and does not practice the love that she preaches... It's sickening, and especially for me, I think, like, this whole thing, like, I didn't know, I knew that she had been canceled, and this is probably because I just wasn't actively keeping up. Actually, I think I saw the twit, the Twitter post, the tweet that she had, like, said that started this whole thing, Mm. and when I saw it, 
I think this was two years ago now. My first thought was was not how could she say that and let me finish because it's not what you think. My first mm. thought wasn't it's how could she say that. My my first thought was she's just off her rocker again. She's been off her rocker this whole time. People have been talking about her losing her marbles and saying things with the Harry Potter series that she had previously said were false. Mm. Like my thing specifically was like when I knew she was losing her marbles is because it does say in the book there's a specific few lines that say Hermione's white face or Hermione's pale face. And I was like, and then she started saying, oh, no, Hermione was black in an effort to be inclusive. And if she was, obviously, that's totally fine. But the thing is, is she was changing her opinions in an effort to be more inclusive. And mm-hmm. then, like, my thought was just that she was, you know, falling off the rails again or that she was saying it in a sense of, like, I don't agree with this. Or I do agree with the scientist, but 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 I didn't read it correctly, and I've gone back and I've reread those tweets, and I obviously don't condone them. But it's really hard for someone like me, who's grown up with you know her and idolized her and wanted to be her, and honestly owed my entire creative life to her. Yeah, it's very hard for people like me, I think, to distance themselves from her as a person because how do you? contribute to this concept of death of the author while still being so ingrained in the content that they create like i just don't see how that works yeah and i think it's kind of hard too because like jk rowling inserted herself into this world like she made sure that the whole entire harry potter brand was associated with her and that's why it's like really hard to sort of separate the art from the artist in this case because she's so heavily ingrained into it right and i think like in her case in particular it's like what you can't as much as you want to say oh stop giving her money stop buying the merch stop signing up for this website stop going to universal you may say that but if you get the chance and i say this as someone who's been to the harry potter world at universal studios if you get the chance you're gonna want to take it because it's a replica of the world that you grew up loving so as much as you want to preach like oh i'm not gonna go there and i'm not gonna give her money Yes, you are, but you just may not buy any souvenirs while you're there. Like, you're going to compensate for it. So there's no way that, like, you can be – you can shut yourself off from her. Like, Mm -hmm. sorry to keep going off on tangents, but, like – No, you're fine. The TikTok trend, too, where it's like, oh, yeah, Hermione wrote the books or this person wrote the books, not her. I'm like, okay, you don't have to agree with her. You don't have to like her. Everyone is very disappointed in her and disgusted. But she did write the books. Yeah. I I think that that also, by trying to disassociate her from the work that she's done, is also kind of ignoring the fact that she said those things. And it's like, right. no, we need to address that behavior. We need to address a lot of the rhetoric that she's throwing around because it's very harmful to the trans community. And the trans community is already so vulnerable as it is. So... Mm-hmm just by just disassociating her instead of addressing it and being that way it's like no we need to talk about it we need to take make her accountable for it and i definitely think that despite the fact that she most likely wouldn't listen because again she's probably just as hard-headed as everybody else who has an issue with this yeah like despite the fact that she wouldn't listen that doesn't mean that the harry potter community itself cannot preach those values and uphold those values of inclusivity and love and respect that the series itself is and has been like putting out into the universe like Mm. we as a community community can talk about it and be like she created this world but this is what we are going to make of it yeah that's true because a lot of the times like communities can take things and make it their own right like, that's fan fiction, and especially in the queer community. Right, and, like, a lot of the things can be canon, mm. but, like, like a lot of, like, we can obviously keep all of her tropes and everything if that's what you so choose to do, but be like, okay, because I think a lot of people think that because of her actions, that the whole thing, that the series that they knew and grew up loving has kind of become a lie, because... If she's saying these things but doesn't ultimately mean them, then what does that mean for these characters that we love? Yeah. I think that making sure that we as a community kind of uphold, like, 
this is what she taught us that it was. And just because she's gone back on that promise doesn't mean that we should. That's true. So I think, like, as hard as it is to do, we have to acknowledge that she gave us the stepping stones for this world. But now it's ours because she's finished it. She is kind of, not entirely, but she's mo- for the most part washed her hands of writing stories about Harry and Hermione and everyone. So now it's up to us to see where this is going to go and what this movement phenomenon, whatever you want to call it, means. I'm just like, that's kind of what I want to be like, is like, we have to separate her from her work in order for it to still be feasible. Because I feel like there's a lot of authors that we could separate from their work, too. Yeah, like, um, that's how I feel about Doja Cat, because she said a lot of problematic things and didn't exactly apologize. But I still like her music and think she's very versatile and creative. And it's the same thing, actually. I'm not not for me personally, because I think he's a pile of garbage. Well, actually, yes, for me. Mm. I think he's a pile of garbage, but do I like his music? Is it catchy? Yes. Chris Brown in particular. Nobody, no! <laughs> nobody stopped for supporting Chris Brown's music. They also stopped supporting him as a person. And he is a trashy person. You hit your girlfriend, you deserve a one-way ticket to jail. And the only reason that he isn't there is because he's filthy fucking rich. But the That's thing true. is, is his music catchy? Yes. Do I choose to actively be actively preach about how much of a piece of shit that I think this man is? Yes. When I am really bored at the gym and need something to dance to, will I go to Chris Brown? Yes. <laughs> I'm filled with rage. I hate that man so much. I do too, but like his music is so catchy. Mm-hmm. It's so bad, but it's so good. I get that. You could always like illegally download it too, just to like not support him. You know what I mean? Because there are ways yeah. to do that. I forget that Spotify money probably does go back to him in like some small part. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. God, I wish I brought this up while we were podcasting, but I didn't think of this. It reminds me of all the misogynistic music that I have on my phone. And similarly, a lot of people that support the misogynistic rap industries, the misogynistic country, the misogynistic pop, like misogyny is basically everywhere. But I think that that sort of goes into what we're talking about here, because I don't think anyone has content that is unproblematic that they enjoy at the same time. I think we all have something that we can relate to this topic where the author isn't exactly writing good things or the author themselves isn't necessarily a good person, um, but we enjoy their media regardless. And I, to give an example, I guess, because I didn't really bring this up a lot, Black Butler, for instance, is an anime that I really enjoy and I'm starting to get into the mangas and yada, yada, yada. Um, They have this character by the name of Grell, who is a grim reaper and she identifies as a woman and says in the manga and in the anime at times that that is the gender that she wants to go by. But Sebastian, CL, all the other characters refer to her as a man and she's, you know, the butt of the joke. She's constantly not taken seriously and it sort of shows this transphobic ideology that isn't necessarily helpful towards that community. But when you look at the fandom, for instance, everyone respects her pronouns. Everyone, not everyone, but the majority of the fandom respects that Grell identifies as a one. Um, The majority of the fandom uses the correct pronouns for her. And I think that that's a good example of um, taking content that you don't necessarily agree with and taking content that's problematic and making something good out of it. And, you know, it kind of shows that you can separate the art from the artist. You can take art that is problematic and you can make it unproblematic by pushing the fandom in the right direction. And it's not a it's it's not a black and white issue. That's the whole problem with this sort of thing. Um, I don't even mean to say problem because a lot of things are gray. Uh, But that's what that made me think of, at least. I don't, and I think it's interesting, though, that a lot of artists are just problematic in general. Like, I feel like there are so many, especially if you look back in history, they're just interesting people. 
But I think that, again, goes back to the fact that they're kind of shaped by what's happening around them and the right. viewpoints that, especially in ancient times, were there. Yeah. But, I mean, we could all... I, another thing that I remember, did you hear about... Um, this is related to J.K. Rowling. She published a book called, like, Troubled Blood. I don't know if you... Have you heard about this? No, I haven't. But basically, the book was about this... I could... I'm doing like a summary of this, but it was about this uh, serial killer that cross dressed. And a lot of people noticed that there were transphobic undertones within the novels. So, like, yeah, it's she's just off her rocker. Um, I think she's ultimately lost it in a way that this may have not been her, her whole life, but like. Well, there were signs of her being transphobic. Um, there was someone found that she was supporting this really transphobic shop and she posted to her followers oh. to like buy stuff from there that was um i'll have to look this up but that was one thing oh, that sort God. of led to her being transphobic and then another thing was she was she's just made a few tweets as well that were just subtle I'm but truly, she always like, denied surprised them. i never um I'm truly surprised I never picked up on any of it. And I think it's because I was so blinded to the fact that of, of like, this woman is supposed to be my idol, you know? Hmm. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to idolize someone and grow up wanting to be them. And then, you know, you grow up and you figure out they're a terrible person. Like, that's yeah. soul crushing. Even in, like, my questionnaire for work originally when I was an intern... Mm. um they were like who what celebrity would you most want to have lunch with and i was like i know she's canceled i know like i don't support her but i want to have lunch with her just because i want to know how she got to harry potter because like nobody can create that many creatures and that many like her world is very intricate for being a children's book yeah but i did change it and now it says chris evans so fair enough but like still i like it was to the point where i was like i still refuse to believe that she was this way N like entirely believe it for a very long time because i was like i can't process it it was a big part of my identity yeah and i just can't i just can't imagine though just being like a trans person and idolizing harry potter and idolizing jk rowling too and then just yeah. being hit with the oh you you can't be in this world or yeah, oh you don't like, exist in this world like, my hurt over this issue I, is nothing compared to that of trans the trans community and, like, what they must be feeling. Because, obviously, Harry Potter, like, the series itself has never discriminated. You know what I mean? Like, everybody was allowed to step into this world and be who they wanted to be and embody the traits of the house they thought fit them best. And the fact that she has so... I guess, bluntly put that, no, these people aren't a part of my reality, so therefore they're most likely not a part of Harry's reality. Yeah. And, yeah, I, she's just, she's an interesting person by trying to get brownie points, too, after she published her work. I have I, an issue with... I think Twitter's with... muted her, because I can't oh. see her shit anymore. That's, that's, a, I think Unless that's Unless I go good. looking for it, Yeah. They've mm. muted her because I don't see her shit anymore unless I go looking for it. Good. Do we want to talk about that? <laughs> the whole freedom of speech issue? Uh, well, I wasn't going to go mean, freedom of speech. I don't like, I think it's definitely good that they've muted her just because, like, it's at a point where when you do go look, because there was a point where I thought they disabled her Twitter. And mm. I was like, huh, interesting. I wonder when that happened. So I went to look it up. And I saw she was promoting, like, the Ichabog, which is a, like, children's creature from Harry Potter. And she had, like, been asking people to draw it. And there were just these adults commenting underneath her tweet and saying, Joanne, like, you have every right to your opinion. Like, da-da-da-da-da. And I was like, no, these are the types of people that are taking over the universe that, like, I've lived in? Absolutely not. Like, and it just broke my heart because I was like, this is what it's become. She has built, like, with the followers who are still very active on her feeds, has now put up a sign saying, it's okay to be hateful here and to teach your young children that, too. 
Yeah. Which isn't okay, which is the exact opposite of what she's taught us. Yeah, and the fact that she has, like, this huge platform and she's just continuing to promote that is right. unacceptable. Like, I think, not that it would have excused it, but it would have made it different had she actually actively apologized and meant it and said, I'm going to now educate myself. Yeah. Even though it may be too late, I still want to educate myself to maybe ease the burden on the people that I have offended and hurt. Yeah. But she didn't do that. And honestly, she may be one of the richest women in the world, but what does that mean when your own fans won't even look at you? Nothing. It Like, the people that got you to where you are are the people that you're losing now. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. But I think she deserves to have that mute be put on her because i'm like 100 percent. yeah like the fact that i was seeing again like parents commenting that like i've always taught my children that you're a role model or something like that i'm just like that's in the sense of like the way it was being commented was agreeing with like the transphobia statements yeah her transphobia and it's like it's very different for you to want your kids to model after her as a writer and as a creative than as a person. Yeah. Like, my personal opinion on death of the author, and I think this is really important, is that a lot of people become a different person when they're writing because they become their character. Sometimes, yeah. But I still think outside biases can influence a lot of what you write, too. No, 100%. Like I said, sometimes that happens. Hmm. Or a lot of the time that happens. Because a lot of the time you embody the personality that you want a certain character to have. But, like, I just... I think her views... 20 years ago, 30? It's probably 30 years ago now, almost. Were a lot... I feel like... I don't know how to put this because I feel like I had a way to say it that wasn't going to sound bad. And now I'm like, whatever it is, is going to sound awful. And I've just lost it. And I'm like, I don't want to say it anymore. I just feel like, in part, she may not have even thought of her. And I'm not excusing her actions. But she may not have even actually edited this part out because I don't even. Like, I don't know where I'm going with this yet. But I have a point. Hmm. So maybe edit this part out. But I was going to say, like, 30 years ago, she may not have thought of her views Mm -hmm. on the world as being problematic, exclusive or problematic. Because 30 years ago, you see the constant jokes in popular shows like The Office, like Friends, about transphobic gay people, lesbians. There are constant jokes. And because of that... I feel like she may not have thought her views were very problematic. She probably thought she was very accepting. Because I don't know how she feels about the gay community. I have never... Maybe it's because I've just never looked it up. And I I will say I have the privilege to not have to worry about that. But... I do think that she never thought that naming a character Cho Chang would be problematic. Like, let me just talk about the fact that she named Cho Chang... Cho Chang. Like, you couldn't think of one name for an Asian girl that didn't sound completely and utterly ethnic. Yeah. And not derogatory and associated with racial stereotypes. There is a way to honor culture Yeah, without associating with racial stereotypes. Or, like, very well been trying to make a cultural statement, but I feel like there are more tasteful ways to do that than othering the different races in your series because if you look at even Cho's Yule Ball dress, it's very much like a kimono. Let me look this up. Yeah, it does look like one. Yeah, because they wanted to other those other girls. And did you notice that Lavender Brown in the first three movies was a black girl? Yeah, and then then they switched her out when she got a prominent role. 
the minute she became relevant, she was white and blonde and blonde. Yeah. And ironically, I hated her. <laughs> I mean, I think we all did. But like, I feel like she would have just been I don't know. I feel like it's because she was white and blonde that I hated her especially much because she had the high squeaky voice. The point, I'm like, I know that my point isn't ultimately racist, but I'm like, at first I feel like I'm trying to be like, okay, but maybe she didn't mean it this way, but what I know she did, because I, my, like, my brain still doesn't want to be like, yeah, she's so awful, but I'm like, no, she really is so awful. I see the conflict, and I know. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. Because I still want to, like, one day, I think my thing was always just to, like, ho- like, when I was, maybe a few years ago, saying, like, I- my ultimate goal would just be to, like, hug her and say thank you. Mm. For, like, because Harry Potter has such a deep sentimental impact for me. And now I have to go from that to being, like, I wouldn't want to be seen with her in public. Yeah. It's a big jump, you guys. And, like, I feel like nobody in the world feels that way because I feel like everybody has taken so easily to canceling her. No, there's probably a few people out there, and I feel like it's a slow process, especially with how much, like, you loved her and her content. And I wasn't at the time, like I just said, at the time when it was happening, I didn't pay much attention to it. Maybe it was because of privilege, and maybe it was because I just didn't want to process it. Mm. Or maybe it was a little bit of both. But I really didn't pay much attention to it until I got back on Harry Potter TikTok, and I was like, oh, wait, Joanne's canceled. Why is that again? And then I had to go in and be like, Oh, oh, this is what actually happened. Yeah. I mean, and you grow and you learn as you grow up, too, because, you know, when the whole, like, Dumbledore thing came out when she announced he was gay after the series was over, I I was like... like, you definitely see it when you look back, but you're like... Yeah. But you could have openly said it. Yeah. But you're like, oh, this is great. This is inclusive. And then you look back on it and you're like, oh, she just probably didn't want to write... A queer you know relationship. What peeves me? You know what hmm. peeves me? They had to put Lupin with Tonks because they didn't want because even then people would seri- would ship Sirius and Remus. Mm. Even 10, 12 years ago, people were very much like, Yeah, these two seem like a couple. And she didn't like that. And I always forget that, and that's why Tonks is with him. Like, I didn't even, know that. Even the two actors had said, yeah, we thought we were supposed to be married with the way that we talked to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and at the time, and it, like, has all come together for me recently. It's like, at the, like you said, at the time, you're thinking, oh, wow, she's being so inclusive. She preaches acceptance. And, like, that's why I'm like, that may, be, may have been what she was trying to do, and that's what we took from it. But mm. now it's up to us to make that a reality. Yeah. Because, like, the fact that she wouldn't even put Remus and Sirius together, like, honestly, yeah, sure, the book is set in nineteen in the 1970s and 1980s. But there were still gay people back but then. But there, there was. I mean, and the thing is, the Marauders, I don't think they would have given a fuck. Their friend turned into a werewolf every month. I think James would have been like, ah, right, you want me to leave the room? You know, like, you know what I mean? I can go sleep at Lily's, like... Yeah, that's why it's such bullshit, because it's like, okay, would the Wizarding World care? I don't think so. I don't think they would care about... I think they would. Like, and I'm not saying that in a negative way, but if they care so much about someone's blood status, I think at least... Oh, that's true. I think at least the Malfoy... And I immediately thought of Narcissa and Lucius Malfoy. Mm. I immediately thought of them because, of course, they would care. The pure bloods would care. They'd be like, it's unnatural because we can't reproduce this way. Mm. That's, That's true. what would happen. But, and she did design that world that way inadvertently because if they care so much about just who you who your parents are, they're going to care about every facet of your personality that is other from themselves. True about the time and then you look back on it and you're like oh again like those internal biases are happening there right. but i had no idea about the remus and um lupin well, thing and i think that wolf confirms, star was supposed to happen yeah i think that confirms that she didn't care about it at the time and she wasn't wanting to include that especially with like the fantastic beasts movie coming out too and her being like oh i'm not responsible for any of that to show the queer relationship even though like I was basically trying to cash that out, you know? Yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for listening to this mess of an episode. We're a shit show. We are, as always. Yeah. 
and it's never going to change. So hope you enjoy it. Subscribe. <laughs> Let us know your opinions. Um, and Please don't cancel us. <laughs> Eight or, people or cancel us. Or me, I should say. I'm already canceled, technically, or I should be. Yeah, but I'm employed, so I pray to God nobody cancels <laughs> me. Oh, God. Because I'm, like, no, I'm not at all trying to be hateful. I'm just, like, think come out the wrong way sometimes, and I'm like, no, 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 not that way. I mean, I think you've stated your points pretty well, though. Yeah, so we might just have to edit out the rambling that I do about, like, okay, but I see this, but, like, also no... So I feel like that's just going to help with editing and stuff. True. So we'll fix it. But follow us on our socials at Fangirl Files Pod or Podcast, depending on Instagram or Twitter. Yeah, they'll be listed in the description. And uh, I'm not going to say fuck off this time because I feel like being absent for two weeks, I don't deserve to say it. (laughs) Yeah. We'll fuck off today. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, you guys yeah, yeah. enjoy uh, your we'll see you next time. <laughs> and oh, we will go die in our respective holes anyway alright goodbye signing off from, the, from Queen Petty and the Virgin Whore of course as always goodbye configuring the bluetooth deciding who controls the music avoiding potholes remembering where you parked why are simple things sometimes so complicated Thankfully, with Auto Owners Insurance, getting the right coverage for your vehicle doesn't have to be one of them. Auto Owners works with independent agents who live in your community and answer when you call, so you can get back to more important things, like remembering if you're on the third or fourth level of the parking garage. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if Auto Owners makes sense for you. Hey guys, I'm Serafina, and thanks for listening to SGP Radio. Stream our podcast and more across SGP Radio platforms, including the Brandon Gerald Productions app for iOS and Android. Or you can visit www.bgpllcapp.com. Stream, download, listen, like, Share, subscribe, repost, binge, and enjoy this podcast and so much others like Not Your Token Black Girl, Working Gals Guide, Black Girl Storytime, Juice Pro Wrestling, Black Guy Wrestling, and Podcasts About Nothing. We have so much more on our stations. Tell it for her noir and wrestling fans including sgp radio originals and our blogs enjoy support for this episode has been provided by ratio keto friendly crunchy bars if counting macros makes your head spin count instead on a snack by ratio they've done the math for you so you can spend less time studying the label and more time enjoying your day Delicious and convenient, both their toasted almond and lemon almond flavors have two grams of net carbs and a unique combination of sugar and protein, all in a satisfying crunch. Interested? Ratio keto-friendly bars are now available in the granola bar aisle at Walmart. As a small business owner, you're redefining business as usual. From rethinking the way you work to reassessing your bandwidth, you're changing the way you do business. And at Cox Business, so are we. With flexible internet packages to get you back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Get 50 megs of internet for only $70 per month for six months. No annual contract required. Ends 123120 restrictions apply. Visit coxbusiness.com for details. All services subject to Cox Business General Terms.